Howdy ho, YouTube! Welcome to part 18 of Horizon Forbidden West with a therapist. We had quite a lovely episode on the last one. I quite enjoyed meeting the three of these guys. Thanks so much, as always, for making it through these videos and for giving the playthrough a shot. I am grateful for all of your comments and kind words and feedback and all that stuff. And uh, I hope that you continue to leave comments and leave thumbs up on the videos. This should be a lovely episode. At least I'm hoping we're going to probably learn some cool stuff. It's always fun when we're on the main quest line, so let's do it. Let's give Moreland all these mats. What can I do for you, partner? Got your stuff. I've got everything I need to build the... Uh... The incredible diving mask. Yeah. I think diving mask is enough. <laughs> I won't quibble. Workbench is all yours. Thanks, bro. You got a blueprint? Oh, God. The incredible diving mask. All right, let's see how this works. An improved version... All right, let's see. The special breathing apparatus that enables diving to extreme depths. Compressed air capsule, machine kneecap, and synthetic membrane. Honestly, I like the idea of me building it. It gives me more control over it. Especially for something that my survival is going to rely upon. Uh, let's maybe upgrade our pouches if we can while we're at it. Uh, I need rabbit hide for that. Good shit. Whoa. There's a marvel. If it works, you'll let me try it? I want to get down there and get those embers. Assuming I don't drown. So what are you really looking for down there? It's hard to explain. Something that caused a malfunction in the apparatus that controls the old city. I think it started the flood. Well, I, I thought we started the flood. Like we sprung a trap. I don't know how we were detected. Like I said, the dancing lights around us changed, turned to sea life. There was this flash of red and the roar of water surging in. Wait, a flash of red? A, a red light from a spot near the grate on the floor where the water burst through. It was like a beacon. Or a warning. Thanks. That might help. I hope it does. And good luck down there. Thanks, bud. Okay. Time to see if this thing works. Great Nora doth jump into the depths to wet the whistle of curiosity and to wet the armor into which she is sheathed. We were finally going to get away from this place. Well, good thing that Aloy showed up. We'll see. The longer their sojourn in the desert, the crustier the shard counter's mood became. Hey! Oh, so good. I can actually breathe down here. You can talk into it? There you go, Aloy, but can you handle the crushing pressure of the depths? I'm gonna- she's gonna get the bends if we come up too fast, man. This is intense. You have a flashlight in your- oh, that's right. Dude. Diving mask seems to be holding up. I've never been able to swim this deep before. I just can hear Radiohead in my head right now. Wow, it's like the water temple.
It started right here, more than 30 years ago. Back when this casino was still called the Temple. One big day turned my fate around. But now, fate's dealt as cruel as hell ever to everyone. I have to turn the lights out one final time. And the waters of my adopted home will at last run dry. Well, if a dream has to die, at least I can say goodbye first. Stanley Chen. What did he do here? Find out. Pit boss. This is awesome. I want to see what Aloy looks like with this thing on her face. Oh, man. Neat. Stanley Chen, looking back. <clears throat> Las Vegas, May 4th. That's Allie's birthday, 2060. That's Allie's 71st birthday. <laughs> That's weird to think about. <laughs> That's at least my wife, for those who don't know. 20 years ago this week, Stanley Chen broke ground on one of the most ambitious construction projects in American history, even though many Americans didn't want him there. As he struck his spade into the barren soil, the CEO quipped how resentment against Chinese political influence had turned Vegas into a boiling hotbed of nationalistic sentiment, but how his immense fortune had cooled that down. Finally, warming Americans to his idea of a new Las Vegas. Ooh, new Vegas, not a, not a good, good boy. All out, and saw how that went. Who would have believed at the time that, we would, that he would become one of the most beloved figures of the clawback era? But Stanley Chen has always been one to defy the odds, literally. In 2035, during a meeting with potential investors at the old Tempo Hotel, Chen watched in horror as his water filtration startup drowned before his very eyes, realizing too late that his once-trusted lawyer had sold critical patent info to the competition. The resulting chain reaction of busted deals wiped him out, leaving him with only $88,000 to his name. Devastated, Chen decided to leave his future to fate. He went to the casino floor and placed all $88,000 on a roulette wheel, number eight. It hit. The resulting 37 to 1 payout netted him nearly 3.2 million, enough to rejuvenate his dreams of starting a successful business. He threw himself back into his work, eternally thankful for his lucky new lease on life. Five years later, it wasn't Chen that needed saving, but Vegas itself. The hot zone crisis had strangled tourism. Years of ever increasing heat had dried out the county completely. Water, in critical demand everywhere, was now too expensive to import. Abandonment seemed to be the only option. The City of Lights was about to go dark forever. But Stanley Chen couldn't let that happen. In five years of incredible success, he had turned $3.2 million into $200 billion, selling water filtration technology that data corrupted. Wow. Man. Put $88,000 on eight and hit. That would be a hell of a rush. This is cool. Nautical lights. It must be Poseidon's doing. This is so cool. And all of this is underneath the sand. The, the, I mean, the sound design down here is...
The music? I wonder if we're going to end up draining the water out. <coughs> A lot of yellow stuff around here. That looks like a way out. Poseidon's down here, somewhere. Gotta find where it's hiding. You can like hear. Cygnus VT, thank you for the raid. Appreciate that, friend. Whoa! Whoa! It's a Leo Pluridon, Charlie! Underwater. I'll have to be careful. It's a Leo Pluridon! Sean the non believer! Sean! This is massive. And all of it's encased in a dome. Oh, that's what all that shit up on the surface was. Shit, dude. That thing's cool as hell. You don't see me. You don't see me. How am I supposed to get around you, though? Oh god! Long story short, essentially, I have this split to my TV and to my stream setup. And if I don't have my TV on, it doesn't quite know what to do sometimes. And so I forgot to turn my TV on. That's why I did that. We're good. All good. That was pretty awesome, though, that it was coming at me and then the screen went black. I thought that was by design. All right. The side really doesn't want us in there. Yeah, but I can't swim. Looks like that would probably be it over there. There. Red light. This is, this is awesome. I totally agree with everybody saying this is awesome. This is amazing. Like, this is really neat. If you're going to do a water level, this is the freaking way to do it, man. Oh, God, is that... Is that a gator? There's a gator down there.
alert. Critical flooding detected. Automatic drainage controls offline. To execute an emergency purge, manual reset of primary and secondary pump nodes is required. The purge can then be triggered at the pump maintenance station. If I do this purge and drain all the water, I can fight that big machine on dry ground. Looks like I have to reset a couple of pump nodes first. According to the map, there should be an access point for the first node south of here. I'm gonna have to swim past old Gator. We're by Paris and Bellagio, yeah. More machines down here. I'll have to swim around them. Stick to cover. I love that they have like kelp down here to use as cover. This is awesome. This is how you do a water level, right here. This is how you do Here's it. The access point. Should lead me to the pump node. I feel like I'm in a freaking destiny a dungeon. Of these tunnels down here. Water lines for an entire city. Yeah, dude. Aloy, if you could believe it, back in the day there were people that lived down in these water tunnels. It was very sad. The town was so much money rolling around it and people had to live down here. from here. Maybe there's something I can climb to get out. I'll shake it out as I go. Primer note shut down now. I think the last time I was down here was during the Lumia Grand incident. A malfunction led to an overflow of detergent in the pipes. Suds rose from every fountain. As we frantically tried to fix it, I looked up and saw everyone in the lobby chasing bubbles the size of basketballs. Young and old alike. And now there are magical moments in the impossible city. Another recording from Stanley Chen. Yep, that's what it was, Aloy. Thank you. And to the people that are getting pissed at me about, oh man, you open the menu and then we don't get to hear what Aloy has to say. If that's the kind of shit Aloy has to say, I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> oh, and, and it, a, a recording from Stanley Chen. Thank you. Almost forgot. Just a like this. Could have been his identical sounding brother Dennis, Turn yeah. Node down. Better swim back up and find the access point for the second node. That's right, I forgot about Dennis. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Alright, maybe he pronounced it Denny. Let's go. According to the map, the second node should be on the other side of the dome.
Okay, so we are theoretically, if I understand this correctly, we are, this is the strip. And so that would, yeah! So we are, we were just in Paris. Cause this is the foot of the Eiffel Tower, which means that across is the Bellagio. Oh man, this is so freaking cool. Oh! Living in Vegas and then playing this is just such a treat. Yoshi, thank you for the raid. I got watchers down here too? Really? Chill, you didn't see shit. You didn't see shit. You're not that smart. Go away. I mean, they're kind of cute, but I'm not trying to mess with them right now. Go, 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 God, go! Another access point. Into the Bellagio. Let's go. Las Vegas became Lake Mead, apparently. Okay. Yeah, another recording. Yeah. Just shut down the secondary node. <clears throat> no more water for the fountains. No more shows. No one left to appreciate them anyway. I'll never forget the city's grand reopening. The fountains had been bone dry for years. No one believed they'd ever return. So, as the first bloom arced up in the dome, the music swelling, my heart soared right along with it. The city gave me a second chance once. Now it had one, too. The domes, the water. He was responsible for all of it. That's pretty cool. It's cool that that guy decided to like channel his energy into making Vegas better and coming back. It's good shit. <clears throat> Probably wasn't as much biomass for the feral robots to mess with. I won't budge. Maybe that debris is weighing it down. Well, how convenient that I can blow this up. I haven't been to the Bellagio yet, but I hear it's gorgeous. It is. It's pretty cool. Let me blow this up. Okay. Let's see if that helped. There we go. Okay. I've taken care of both nodes. Now I just need to activate the emergency purge at the maintenance station. Yes. It's half covered in F1 grandstands right now? Yeah. According to the map, the maintenance station should be at the south end of the dome. Of course it is. Why would it why would it why wouldn't it be closer to the thing that's trying to kill me? Chill, bro. Chill. Chill, bro. Yee! There are gators down here. Gators. Still, 
There's red light in that tower. Just like at the console I found earlier. That might be the main end station. But how to get in? Great, great question, Aloy. Oh God. It looks like part of this building collapsed. There might be a way in. Who's the data point over here? Let's risk it all. Data corrupted. You'll see a recreation of the Mongolfier Brothers hot air balloon. This is the second model of the balloon to grace the Las Vegas Strip after the first one was sold to a casino in Shanghai in 2031. The original Montgolfier's balloon took flight in Paris, France, in 1783 and was the first free flight by humans. But the two brave men who jumped aboard weren't the first beings to take to the air. King Louis the 16th had insisted on a test flight that sent a sheep, a duck, and a rooster into the skies three months earlier than their human data corrupted. Oh. Mm -hmm. Down we go. Okay, let's see where this leads. Nice. What do we got here? I find green shine too often. Aloy, yeah, we find green shine all the time. What are you talking about? I think I'm in the maintenance station now. I just gotta find a console to activate the emergency purge. Did your hours get shittier, or am I just showing up late? Daylight savings time makes it so that for some parts of the world I go live an hour later than usual. So it's probably that. Because daylight savings time is stupid. God, I just, the amount of detail in this game is outrageous, man. No wonder their budget was insane. One final walk. System shut down, so almost done. Only thing left is to power everything down at the control center. So, I guess this is it. One final walk down the strip, and then it's lights out forever. At least I won't be around to see it destroyed. The Odyssey will be well on its way to Sirius by the time the swarm gets here. Still, my last memory of this place will be empty. A city that's already dead. Stanley Chen was one of them. The Zenith. But he did so much for this place. He, he doesn't sound like the others. Well, I can't imagine. Well, okay, so that's kind of interesting. Like, A lot can happen. 
in all of those years. So, I mean, like, I'm not being critical of Aloy here, but when she's like, he doesn't sound like the others, I'm sure most of the people on the Odyssey in Far Zenith didn't sound like they were going to come back and nuke the Earth so they could do what they want with it. Like, I don't think that was part of the directive at the time. I'm sure that when they were all getting on Far Zenith, they were just like, hey, hopefully this works and we wake up somewhere and survive or are cloned or whatever, right? Like, they wouldn't have been thinking so far ahead like this. So they were, you know, there was a lot of rich people that made it aboard the uh, Far Zenith and the Odyssey, which, uh, I mean, I guess makes sense. They had resources and could pay for it and capitalism and all that fun stuff. But yeah, I mean, I bet all of those people had good intentions for stuff. So the reality is, Aloy, that like stuff changes. Like they're also, this, this isn't him. This is the clone of him which means that it probably has very different motivations from things in the same way that the clone of you slash Elizabeth Sobeck is doing stuff with them. Like they're autonomous individuals in a completely different context. And really the thing that I think is like the underpinning of this whole thing is just the importance of understanding the way in which context and environment shapes the way that people show up. Like we are all products of our environment. A lot of us like to believe that we would be the same exact person if we developed in other parts of the world, in other cultures, at other times. But the reality is you wouldn't. Like if you were born in 1783 in India, you'd be a lot different. Like you have the same genetics, but like if as a baby I took you and then the genetics you have and I plopped you back in time there, you would be so much different because the nurture would be so much different and the demands of your survival and your environment and stuff would dictate that you would be habituated to other things. Like you would, you would learn different rules. You would like, that's how it works. So all of those people on far Zenith were brought about in a different environment that has different demands in the same way, arguably that that's the case with us. Like, we didn't get cloned and produced in the same world that existed when these clones were made. And we're seeing that. We see some parallels on Earth, but the reality is that, like, Aloy is different than Elizabeth Sobek. She has similar genetics, maybe a similar temperament, but she's not the same person because she's in a different environment. And this is why in all of these playthroughs... I am constantly talking about the importance of context because context is what is going to help you understand things and understand people and their motivations and why they show up the way they do so much more effectively than anything else. It, it, we, we should never believe that people are these static things that would exist the exact same way as they are no matter where you plop them because that's just not how it works. <clears throat> And I guess it's true. I don't know. I don't recall as much about Far Zenith to know whether they're like clones or whatever. I mean, I'm sure we'll get more of that information over time. There. Time to dry this place out. Oh, baby. Getting back up is. I mean, we're just really taking for granted that we're going to be able to get back up there, huh? Holy shit. Whoa! Astronaut! Yeah, where did that all go? That did it. <laughs> okay. I can deal with that machine guarding the door on the other end of the dome. And once I get past it, I can get to what's waiting on the other side of the door. Poseidon. Yeah, dude. Uh, I, that water had to go somewhere. So did I, I might have just flooded out the Tanakh. Who knows? This is pretty nutty.
At least the purge didn't get rid of all of the water. They shall receive it in abundance. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, maybe I should have done this before I had Draka and that other chick fight to the death. Could have avoided all of it. And like, look, guys, there's plenty of water. We don't need to do this. Yeah, oh, man. Okay, so like when you go to Paris on the Strip, yeah, they have like, I forget what this thing's called. Whatever, the arch. Uh, this is where the valet parking and stuff is. There's like a loop that goes up and around. <laughs> so I love this Las Vegas timeline Las Vegas timeline for Miss Chavez's history class 15,000 BC mammoths woolly elephants came to Nevada before it's called Nevada to eat 8,000 BC Native Americans come and draw pteroglyphs which are different different from pterodactyls <laughs> 1829, some people from a place called Spain and Europe call Las Vegas, Las Vegas, which means the meadows. 1905, the city's made a city and the railroad comes so people can rest and get water. Dude, I can't even imagine in 1905 what it must have been like to build a freaking railroad in Las Vegas. If you have never been out to Las Vegas, it would blow your mind because it is just desert for miles and people manually built railroads through it <clears throat> unreal shit absolutely unreal also the like the making of the hoover dam is insane if you ever want to read like an amazing feat of human engineering read about how the hoover dam was made it's just absolutely unreal it blows my mind to think about people manually making a railroad in the middle of the desert Nineteen thirty-one, a big dam called the Hoover Dam is made near Las Vegas. Nineteen forty-six, Benjamin Bugsy Siegel opens a hotel. <clears throat> Nineteen fifty-one, big bombs are blown up in the desert. People come to watch the mushroom clouds, and our city is called Atomic City. Lots of hotels are builded. Nineteen fifty-six, Elvis Parsley perform per performs in Las Vegas. <laughs> Oh, God. 2007. A big hotel called the Stardust has exploded. It's true. 2030, it gets very hot and the animals die and the people say it's too hot and go away. 2035. Well, what? What? 2023. The Vegas Golden Knights win the Stanley Cup. Okay, whatever. It's fine. Don't put that in there. 2035, Stanley Chen is very lucky and wins $3.2 million on a roulette wheel by guessing the numbers. 2037, people from Nevada and Arizona and California fight against robots when the government tries to make them leave because it's so hot. Almost nobody comes to Las Vegas anymore. 2040, Stanley Chen has used the lucky money and made more from making water that you can drink without getting diseases that make you sick. He pays his money for a big bubble over our city and a hotel called The Fountain. 2047, my school Stanley Chen Elementary is open for children. Thank you, Mr. Chen, for everything you have paid for our city where we live and for stopping it from turning into a dessert. Looking like a snack. That's cute that we got to read that. Yeah, yeah, thank God Vegas didn't turn into a dessert. <clears throat> It's a city made of ice cream. Yeah, absolutely A plus report, for sure. Yep. 
first. Jesus. I like that they kept the uh, the Eiffel Tower. Spotted. Spotted. A red-haired Nora walking the streets of Las Vegas. Will she take out the machines, or will she fall prey to Sin City? XOXO. Custom order. Hey, Wendy! I had to leave early today. Could you handle something for me? That custom order from Mr. Tuberville in Family Suite 115 just came in. The receipt makes it very clear that it's not to be sent from to his room. He wants the package sent out to Miss Olivia in New Paradise. <laughs> yes, that Miss Olivia. And no, he clearly doesn't know. So don't you go telling him, girl. If she wants to keep squeezing gifts out of these sheets, then good luck to her. I thought maybe she'd finally got too old to reel them in. But Liang saw she was but Liang said she saw Miss Olivia on Tuesday and she looked like she was in her early 30s again. So she must have gone back in for more work. And it couldn't have been cheap, that's for sure. Treatment or not, I hope I've still got half an hour energy when I'm in my 60s. Alright, I gotta run. Get that gift out. Get that gift sent out to her. Usual drone service. See you Wednesday! It is Vegas. People get off the plane here and just lose any sense of morality they ever had. It's kind of wild. It's so funny living here because, like, when you get off a plane, like, you can tell there are some people that are just, like, itching to just, like, lose themselves for a week. And I'm just like, I want to go home, man. Like, I'm not. I just want to go to my house. Voice to text transcript, message log, March 10th, 64, 124 p.m. P. Collins, this is the land of the free. This is the land of the free. How can we be free if we can't even drive our own cars? Smith Richardson Ogler, as your lawyer, I must remind you that removing the car's self-driving automation could lead to the whole point of this case is to return my fine vintage automobile to its original O-R-I-G-I-N-A-L condition, and that means no robots. Yes, and in our papers, this is a place of history, American history, from when we made things. They want all our history to vanish. Uh, I'm not sure that the court... Oh, I know what the court will say. It's just a car. Safety must come first. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, it's likely that, but that's not what this is about. It's about returning this car to its original, unchained, unbridled American data corrupted. <laughs> Dude, I want to know where all the data points are here. I don't want to miss anything. They're so good. <clears throat> Can the Leah plur it on? Oh, okay. Okay. Poseidon is through there. But where did that machine go? Aloy! It's a miracle! Guys! No, guys! Oh. Get out of here, boys! 
Was this you? Did you lower the waters? Yeah, but there's a new problem. That thing's in our way. band of adventurers beheld the beast. They knew what they had to do. What? Run! Are you crazy? Hush now. She saved our death. Okay, then. Stay up here and start firing when I engage. You, yeah! Let's go! I'm out, bro. <laughs> I don't blame him, man. I, I'm just here to count money. Places, fellas. Get to that overhang. A tide ripper, large and powerful acquisition machine that filters sediment from resource or for resources. Whether on land or in water, it weaponizes purge water for devastating attacks. Wow, dude, these are hard outer casing to protect synthetic muscle and operational systems. Resource and material storage for internal functions tear off to collect its contents. Powerful cannon that blasts high pressure beams of purge water. Detach or destroy both to disable. Purge water storage. Destroy all pouches to remove purge water effect from certain attacks. Internal core. Extremely vulnerable to damage if exposed. Storage container for valuable resources. Chill water storage, tear off to collect this resource, or shoot with a frost arrow to detonate. A large metal tail uses primary melee weapon. Detach or destroy to disable all ta tail attacks. Signal transmitter used to call machine reinforcements. We're going to want to take that out. A large rotational device that can fire powerful streams of purge water. Detach or destroy to disable its water spin attack. Steam expulsion. Vulnerable to damage, but only extends when purge water supplies are depleted. Shock storage, tear off to collect resources, glow blast storage, large purge water storage, destroy both sacks to fully remove purge water from body slam attacks. Dude, this is so cool. All right. Let's get rid of that uh, antenna. Hit me. Oh! Ah! No! Take that. Come on, gentlemen, get a move on. <laughs> That's cool. What do you think, boys? Pretty impressive, huh? You guys all right? More than all right. This... You... We did it! <laughs> all the embers we could ever want, and it's all thanks to you. Very, uh, heartwarming. But maybe we can just, you know, grab what we came here for and get out before any more of those things decide to show up. Now, now, shard counter. Nothing wrong with a little remnant. 
Though we should probably let our flame-haired friend get going. I believe she has business down here, does she not? Right, of course. You need any help? I can handle it from here. Very well. Well, we'll start taking some of the embers upstairs. Holler if you need us. Thanks. Oh, they're like all just chilling in the ground here. Look at that. That's cool. All right. Somewhere beyond this door. Time to bring it home. Poseidon should be hiding in some kind of processor. I need to find a console to gain access to it. Man, all this stuff was impervious to water? I guess it would make sense. There. I should be able to use that console. But first, a reading. I can't do it. I can't give up on this place. I'm leaving everything on standby. The system's equipped for runs for decades, if not hundreds of years. It's a long shot. But maybe someday, against all odds, someone will find this place again. Marvel at its lights and wonders. Discover a fortune and boundless opportunity. Make it their own dream. After all, if the city can give me a second chance, if water can flow in the wasteland, anything's possible. He was right. You know that stuff swimming around. I can't wait. I hope we get to like talk to Poseidon. Hacked again. Hidden in the AC codes. Someone must have inserted it via a thermostat interface. Pretty funny, actually. You know that hollow ad for the Crave Men review over at the vodka? Well, their uh, loincloths disappeared. Went on for almost an hour before we shut it down. Chuckles aside, we can't let it happen again. I've been over the environmental and hollow systems and they look okay. On your shift, have a look at the water and filtration code. Need to think what might happen if these systems were compromised. It'd be a lot worse than a few naked Neanderthals on the strip. Oh, baby. Here we go, chat. In part 19. I'm not doing that. I'm here to bring you home, Poseidon. To Gaia. If you want to go. Mother. What is the act of Elizabeth Sobek. Alpha Prime. Master Override activated. Restoring Poseidon's subordinate function to original code. Done and done. Okay. Gotta bring us back to Gaia. That's it? Oh, so we gotta talk- well, we gotta- we gotta watch him talk to his mommy. Man, I was hoping we get to have a neat old conversation with him. Something tells me that shit ain't gonna be this easy going up. System reboot initiated. Looks like taking Poseidon trigger to restart at the city's power system. Figures. Yeah, look at that. Look at that timing. Whirling and crew must have headed back up top. With all the embers they could carry, I bet. Hot. I'm sweating everywhere. 
Whoa! Dude! Yeah! Oh man, this is so cool. The astronaut is so badass, dude. Like, look at that thing. You kidding me? I want a big ass astronaut on the strip. Oh man. Bellagio, looking good. The roads over Vegas Boulevard, literally right here. That is so, oh, it's so badass, man. This makes me so happy. Like they didn't have to do this. How many people just, you know, walk out of that and then go up the door and leave? Like they, they didn't have to do this at all. And it's just so badass that they did. Like it adds so much. I don't see the Osram guys. They must have got what they needed and got out. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah. This is why you go to Vegas first. This is why you don't hesitate. I just want to like walk around and explore and like see all this stuff, man. Like, I don't want to miss anything. We has only hesitated for seven or eight side quests, right? You conceptually, theoretically, commit to Vegas. Well, 
elevator. Mon must have built this before the place flooded. This will work. Be nice not to have to climb back up. Yeah, no shit. It's a little waterlogged, but it'll do. some hidden achievement to actually climb this. All right, boys, you're outside. Cool. Whatever she did, she must have powered up the whole thing. Oh, wow. How much did all this cost? going on out there <clears throat> oh boy <sighs> oh. oh show my old gramps always wanted there's another <laughs> come on his dream realized his old gramps legacy ensured our hero beheld the sea of desert lights and wept at his good fortune. When I saw the embers as a child, I never dreamed they could be like this. Thank you, Aloy. Well, did you find what you were looking for? I did. And now I have to move on. Oh. Oh. Come back when you can. I got big plans for this place. I thought you wanted to put on shows with the Embers back in the claim. Oh, no. This is the show. Oh, can you imagine? Folks from all over the land coming to take it all in. Plus, some food and a nice place to stay. Not to mention a variety of entertainment venues. Yeah, don't forget. Games of chance. Plenty of shards to be had there for certain. <laughs> A new dream. Oh, God. I, um, I hope you make it happen. Goodbye, gentlemen. <laughs> That's Steve Wynn's clone. Miss Delve, <clears throat> a story for the ages. All thanks to you. So badass. If Moreland and crew is going to stay... Maybe I should come back and check on them later. Uh, For duh. Now, I need to get Poseidon back to Gaia. But I might want to head back to Silga. See if she needs help with that scrambled signal first. And with my new diving mask, I can swim as deep as I need to. Like at those deep water sites I found earlier. The world is our oyster, Aloy. Oh, man. What a neat way to do this. Like, are you kidding me? This has got to look so badass from afar. Like, we got to climb a mountain just so I can see this. Oh, man. I do want to go get that survey drone if I can.
They didn't get the sphere. Well, yeah, this game was unfortunately made before the sphere was a thing, so... Unless they plan to patch it in. No, no sphere for us. Holy craps! Marisha. Welcome back, y'all! We're still reporting live from Flamboyanza, the annual Avatar Gala brought to you by the glamorous and glorious swags at Bareback. As always, all proceeds go to the conservation and repopulation of North American animal species. So let's hope there's maximum Avatar ridiculousness coming up. Moving on to the next craps table and oh, this table is wildness. Pepper, what do we got? Well, Marisha, where to start? Let's go with Steampunk Victorian Queen over here. Look at all the detail on the petticoat. And everything's in a cup of sheen, including her skin. It looks am amazing, Pepper. Can't imagine what dress way if it were real. But what's she doing behind her back? Apparently, she's turning some sort of crank to, yeah, to wind herself up to throw the dice. That's rich. Incredibly well thought out, Pepper. Even her movements are toyish. And what's next to her? Wow, okay, well, hard to miss. It's Sir Discopus. The mustached, eight-limbed party animal. Look, look, he's even got a monocle to match his tuxedo. Whoa, those shifting color patterns are totally freaking me out, Pepper. It's called camouflage, Marisha. And don't tell me you're not loving this. Looking at those tentacles go, woohoo! It's called overkill, Pepper, but I'll admit, those tentacle animations are vivid. I'm way more invested in this neighbor, though. Is that a young Elvis? Yes, Marisha. Boringly enough, that's Vegas' most stereotypical icon in his prime. Oh, he's starting to bulge. <laughs> oh my god, PM, he's morphing into Fat Elvis. Now that, Marisha, is a hunk of burning data corrupted. <laughs> Good old Elvis Parsley. With the bulge. Here I come. level of detail in here just great oh Setting shit oops didn't want to do that no god damn it Come here, big boy. Alright, let's see if I can go get that gym. Pull that baby down since we're gonna go back to Gaia anyway. There 
it is. How do I get it? I will say the holographic lights and stuff make this a little bit more challenging to know where I can and can't get up to. <clears throat> But... Oh. Alright, boyo. Going down! Yeah! First try. I need to get the data from the drone. Sweet. Okay. Go to that unknown. So much to explore. Dude, come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, one of these. Cool. Um, all right, so. Signal spike. I do want to do the signal spike. Um, which is on the way back to Gaia because the base is right there. So I figure that's actually not a bad idea. So let's go. Let's go to that because we're going to cross a campfire. And then we'll use the campfire to travel for free. Sweet deal. So it looks like this part used to be domed as well, but it got destroyed. Dude, look at the stratosphere chilling back there. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Another freaking one of these, man. Holy shit, do I want to figure out those ASAP. All right. Let's go fast travel up here. Because I don't need to make that full trek. By the way, those of you that are here on YouTube and those of you that are here live on Twitch, thanks so much for making the effort to come watch this with me. I see you, champion. Sit, please. If you walk by, you'll miss out on a Y'all are great, trade. and I'm really, uh, I really appreciate your support of the channel. Your presence more than anything else, but those of you that financially support the stream, thank you for doing that as well. Check out the merch store if you haven't already. You might like some stuff in there. Okay. I'm happy to sit You can trust out. a Tanakh when it comes to commerce. Choosing the right rations can be just as important to your chance of survival as choosing the right weapons. If you want food that'll save your life out in the wilds, go northwest to Saltbite. 
The cook there, Pintala, she'll whip up a meal for anyone who needs it, to Nox or not. I'll make sure to pay her a visit if I'm out that way. Yeah. A taste of victory. Are you Keep your eyes buy? open out there, so... Okay, so I would like to do that first. So let's go... Let's go do some exploring. This mountain. The southern face is my best bet for a climb if I want to get more of Silka's meth. Just gotta look for a path. Yeah, this is gonna be interesting. What the hell is this? Southern side is going to be the best. Well, looks like we may be going this way. Hopefully, this knack garb is good for climbing. I do want to know what that signal she's looking for says. Big stress. Holy shit. We are really working our way around the mountain here. There's probably a smarter way to have done this, but whatever. This is insane that Aloy can even climb this. Crap! <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. I feel like Alex Darnold climbing Yosemite right now. Holy shit. Oh, no! Oh, my God. Yeah, I could have just walked around. Okay, whatever. Whatever! There's just some path I could have taken, you know? It didn't have to be this complicated. Yeah, just walk up. Alright. Whatever. Shut up. Just Skyrim, climb your way up, Aloy. Maybe. Well, maybe not. Hold on. I'm on the east side of the mountain now, dude. Yeah, 
Yeah, whatever. Yeah, no shit, man. I've been doing it for the last freaking hour and a half. Try and pinpoint Silga's signal. Oh. Yeah, why not try that? Yeah, just climb on the icicles. You can do it, Aloy. Oh my goodness gracious. This mountain is tall. Yeah, and look, there's all these fun little glint hawks to hang out with here. Isn't this great? Are we having a good time here? Do you think my uh, my focus knows when I've gotten better climbing skill and then will highlight new rocks as a result? This is like, now nah, you, you suck at climbing, so we're gonna keep these red. And then like as over time, it's like, okay, yeah, that's it now. Stupid bird. Still need to climb higher. Sure, of course. Why not? It'd be an interesting mechanic. I, I mean, it would be interesting, but I, I actually, I think it would be problematic because, like, if she, if she had like a climbing skill and then it got better and stuff, like having to retrace and go back to mountains and figure out what you can and can't climb. I mean, you'd have to like be marking stuff, and this game's long enough already. God, you know, the Grinch and his dog are probably going to be up here. That's how high up I am. Okay, now to pick up the signal. Where is the best spot? I should try to find a good spot to pick up Silga's message. Yeah, I got it, Aloy. Chill. Okay. Woo! Stark 142 to Enduring Victory Reno. Supply drop beacon echo. Pull. I'm afraid you get this safely. I left a note for you inside. There. Found the signal's origin. It's not too far from here. I just need to get to it. All right. It's not bad. Bet I'll get a nice view if I glide down from here. Yeah, you think so, Aloy? I mean, it's already a pretty nice view up here. What's that orange shit down there? What's going on down there? Whee! Oh, this is neat. This would be fun as hell. There's a really nifty way to do this. And some music. Chef's kiss, man. Completed a long glide. Trophy earned. Hell yeah. Oh, look at you. You followed me all the way over here, huh? Okay. okay. So glad they didn't stand in a bar limit. You know, me too. Up the 
of that Silver found. I'll need to clear out the machines before I can look for the source. A lot of machines showing up here, huh? Machines here, holy crap. Knock it off. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shoot him in the dick. the dick holy crap I should scan for that signal now see if I can locate the source Looks like it's right there. Oh, it's a rabbit. Hello. Candy. Yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Scan to Lance Horn, huh? Uh, search the canyon for the source of the signal. There you are. No. Oh. How to get to you? I should take a closer look. What's in the mystery story? Oh boy. Yes, but there's no way I'm supposed to Skyrim climb for this. It's in that general vicinity. Maybe I do have to climb for it. That would really surprise me if I have to climb that mountain like that. I wonder if I need to go around this way and then climb up that way. Thank you. 
an entrance to the cavern. Can't be that complicated. Just leave it to me to make it more complicated than it actually is, I'm sure. Because the signal's coming from there, but the waypoint. Oh, there we go. Woo! Well, not getting in that way. I should search for another way in. Ah, boo! What's up, Sierra? Hmm. Oh! Wow! Holy hell! Right. Into the water. But I can breathe the whole time now, eh, Lois? So it's not that bad. Woo, baby! Military equipment, transmitter, blast paste, metal bone. I couldn't raise you via focus. I hope this gets to you somehow. Along with the cure for the stand at the Reno line. Just wanted you to know that all the bitterness is water under the bridge. I only remember the good things. And I'll think about them when the darkness comes. Sounds like... She really cared about him. Silga will want to know about this. And she'll definitely be interested in the transmitter inside that's been sending the message. Yeah, so let's go give it to her. Wow. Again, I, I just... I love, I mean, it, it sounds weird to say I love it, but I really love all of the desperation. Just of that time, people like having to reconcile a bunch of shit and like having to deal with their, you know, yeah, like, right? Like nothing like the end of the world to make people rethink their priorities. Like it's just, it's amazing, right? Like. It, it, you realize how much stupid shit you worry about when your survival's not at stake. All of a sudden, you toss some pharaoh robots in the into the mix, and people's like survival is in trouble. And they and now they're like, oh, okay, maybe that wasn't such a big deal. And then sometimes people hold on to shit. It's just fascinating how people navigate that kind of stuff. Oh, regard, the rebel outpost. Fast. Gonna have to find whoever's in charge and stop them from causing any more harm. Just blew that guy's face right off. Don't shoot your gun. Don't, Don't shoot your gun. Uh, this outpost. Oh, oh, this yeah, one's got some of those tags I keep moving. Just what I Come needed. Come on! Oh! Get him over! Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, that hurts, doesn't it? I got 62 shots left. You guys ain't shit. 
You guys ain't shit. Where are you all at? I brought a gun to a knife fight. Boom! Boom! Mow your asses down. Right in the dick. Come on, say hello to my real friend. This thing's intense. Hey! Who did that? Oh, I made a mistake. Yeah, you did. Come on. Alright, we're going in. Going in the old fashioned way. You think she's gone? Nah, bro. I'm never gone. I'm your worst nightmare. The coast is clear. Let's hope it stays that way. Oh, relief. Loot the outpost leader. I'm guessing that was the dude with the big gun, but we're gonna go up here first. Alright, big boy, where you at? Thanks. Not sure what to do with them. Or just hold on to them for now. Okay. Cleared that shit out. Um. <clears throat> Might as well go this way real quick. Nice to see some green. Been in the desert for so long. I can override a grazer. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna go in here. Oh, another one of these stupid ass things. We'll take that. trees over. Sunken cavern. Restless wheel. Ugh. Okay. Uh, let's go to this campfire. Go. Yeah. Spoken like a true Nevada resident, yeah, right? I mean, I don't, I don't mind the brown. It's just, you know, when you see green, it's nice. It tickles a little evolutionary part of me that says, hey, it's probably a better idea that you live here than where you actually live. All right, fast travel. Really? Did I not get a campfire nearby where she is? What a dope. <clears throat> yeah, look at you, you beautiful, beautiful skyline. I don't know what that noise was. It was an intense noise.
All right. You could just feel it, couldn't you? And we're going to find out more about that in part 19. You knew I was going to do it. You knew I was going to do it. I'm such an asshole. But here I am. I did it. Put you on the edge of the cliff, waiting for the next one. My friends, thank you for taking the time to watch part 18. I enjoyed that immensely. I know there wasn't a lot of analysis there. That's okay. It doesn't always have to be. I just enjoyed the spectacle of what that brought us. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch part 18. I hope that you will join us in part 19. Uh, if you are binging, head on over. If you're waiting for the next one to come out, I'll get it out as soon as I can. Appreciate y'all. You're the best. Leave a thumbs up. Leave a comment. I'll see you in the next one.